Okay, so um, let us begin. Let me share my screen real quick. So, um, yeah, let me know when everybody can see this screen. Yep, I can see it. Okay. So then let us begin. Today we'll be creating a, a Discord bot on Compute Engine. Everyone uses Discord, you know, as far as I know. And it's, well, it's kind of cool to know how you can or start and run your own, code your own bot on Discord, but also run it 24 seven. So essentially it's gonna be a bot that displays the current weather using the open weather API. And it would be something like this. So I'm the user here. I type in like exclamation mark weather Dallas. And this is the bot name. I, I apologize. It's not something very fancy, but essentially it gives out something like this. It says the location, what weather location, weather for Dallas, and then it gives the current temperature, feels like minimum and maximum temperature. That's what we're trying to create at the end of this workshop. Um, so some key terms before we start would be to know uh, these two functions. One of them is on underscore ready and the other one is on underscore message. Basically on underscore ready handles the event when the client establishes a connection. So it, to work with uh, Discord up high, you need to connect to the Discord client and the on ready function is triggered or called when we have a connection with our Discord client. So whatever is under the on ready function will then execute. The second important function is on underscore message, similar thing. It handles the event when a message is posted in a channel that the bot has access to. So the bot is continuously reading uh, all the messages that are coming in in that channel. And the moment, it finds a message that comes basically every time it's reading something, the on underscore message function is called. And then inside it, we have if statements or anything else that we want that determines how we handle the way the bot processes that message. I think the third important thing to know then is what's an event. Basically, it's just any action that's taking place in Discord that can trigger a reaction or a code, like with the on underscore ready or on underscore message functions. Uh, okay, so the next thing, APIs. API, an API is stands for Application Programming Interface. And it is essentially just something that applications use to communicate with each other to access data. So it kind of hides the way the application actually works like at the back end and just gives like an interface that another application can use to collect data from the from a different application and the way that happens is using api endpoints it's essentially one end of a communication channel where this interaction takes place so it, talking about open weather api in our case our endpoint would be the URL that we use to access, th that we use, that gets the data for us from open, a open, weather, a open weather. So we don't have to worry about how open weather's code is actually implemented. We just have our endpoint, which is the URL, and then we get the data. Uh, API key, it's just a way to identify who's calling the API for authentication and security purposes. And lastly, the open weather API is something that we use to access the current weather data for any location. It has free and paid features, obviously. I'll be using the free one. The JSON output from the open weather API's endpoint looks like this. So it's obviously been made to look slightly prettier than it actually is. And some things have been hiding, like the coordinate information, weather information because the thing that we want to focus on is comes under the main field, which is this temperature feels like temp min, temp max, pressure and humidity. 
So with that being said, let us go on to the actual hands-on coding part. So this is the track it link, and this would be the code for today's workshop. And then I will wait for everyone to get ready. Excuse me. Let me just uh, align it. And I let me see in chat. Okay, when uh, when everyone is ready, then we can begin with uh, well, the, the coding part. Hey y'all, once you um, get on track it and you're able to see the first page of the workshop, um, just say you're ready in chat. And if you have any issues, feel free to let us know, but it should look like what you're seeing on Bruin's screen right now. And then slowly, once you see enough people on track it, um, let us know and we can start. I think it should be open to go to the next page. Okay. Uh, just, just want to make sure everyone has Python and like the required Python libraries. Uh, also, I want to make sure that everyone has a Discord developer account. Okay. I will move on to the next page then. Um, so the first thing is obviously creating a new Python file. So I have actually gone ahead and done that here. It's called main.py, it's in PyCharm. Um, yeah. And before I move on to that, I just wanna uh, say that there's two, there's an important token from Discord that we would need for our bot, which is essentially this, the Discord token. So it should be in your Discord developer account under the bot or the application that you've made under it. Don't publish this online, Discord will catch it and you will have to regenerate your token. Okay, with that being said, the first part is creating a new Python file. The second part would be to import the required file libraries. So you import Discord import quests and import json and we also use a library called pprint which basically just prints out uh, like dictionaries in a nice format easy to read and stuff like that now the first part is obviously connecting to the discord client and then using the token from the Discord developer account to um, get the bot up and running so that you know the, the bot runs and we can see how it works. So I'm just gonna create a client. I'm gonna kind of connect it to Discord as a client. So you can say Discord. Sorry. Discord dot client and at the end, I'm gonna say client dot run. And I'm gonna put in the token that I got. Everyone should have got, everyone should have different tokens for this part. Um, should not be the same. So it should be something like that. Um, 
And I think this much should be enough to get the bot up and running at the minimum. Uh, type error module object is not callable. Oh, hmm. give me a second. Is this supposed to be Discord dot client with a capital C? Oh yes, it is supposed to be that. Oh. I made that. Don't do that. It is supposed to be capital C. And I messed up this part too now. All right, a little bit, some hiccups, but it's fine. And, well, yeah, right now it's not doing anything, but what should happen is that our bot should be online. And yes, it is online, as you can see now. So it's up and running. That's something good. So. Now we have a bot up and running, but it does, doesn't do anything as you can see. So we're gonna now work on the on ready method, which at least tells me when the bot is ready and up and running. And essentially the important thing to note here is there's code of Pi is an asynchronous library. So we use uh, async and await callback await in our function, which is basically uh, a way to do callbacks. Callback is the idea that uh, the code is only executed when it it receives uh, that particular information and the function doesn't execute before that. So let's go ahead and do that. And we need the annotation of client.event. We're gonna say async definition on underscore ready. So this is part of discord.py's library and I'm just gonna say await client dot change underscore presence and activity activity is equal to activity is equal to discord dot activity type equal to discord dot activity to type dot listening. So it's just listening to our messages basically. And you can call it watching. I just call it listening because I like it better. Providing weather. This is just like the description that appears on the side. So I'm just gonna call say that it's providing weather for us. And then okay, and then I'm gonna go to the next line and I'm gonna say print and let me just get this from here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now basically when I when I start running it and it's up and running. Yep, it tells me now that our weather bot is basically online and it says here weather bot has logged in as the user, which is what well, my weather bot is essentially named. And you can see here now it says listening to providing weather. So it's just gonna keep providing weather. It's just like a way you can leave this blank too. That's completely fine. It's just something that looks a little bit nicer. With that being said, mark is completed, and I'm going to wait to what, the end of this part. Where is the Discord token located? Um, so let me so let me open my Discord developer account. It would be
Okay, so for the Discord token, you're gonna go here to applications. This is the bot that I'm working with for this workshop. So when I go here, I'm gonna go under bot and it's gonna say here, click to reveal token and you can reveal the token and that is your token. Does that answer your question, by the way? And when you guys are done with the steps, scroll to the bottom of track it and click mark as completed um, so we know. And then when the majority of people have finished, we will move on to the next part. says there's no module named Discord, even though I've imported it. So for the testing Discord, that is just my own Discord server because you have to be the admin of a server to actually run your own bot there. You can't run a bot in any server you want to. And as you're setting it up, if I go back to the. Yep, yeah, make sure make sure you guys, if you've already had Python installed, make sure uh, you're running 3.7 because this discord.py only works with 3.7. It, it doesn't work 3.8 and above. So if you've already had it installed, you might be running Discord, you might be running Python at a higher version. So this might be because um, on 3.7.9, you have to basically uninstall discord.py first. You'd have to install discord.py again. Um. You might be getting the type error event missing one required positional argument because you might have just said discord a client and missed these uh, parentheses or brackets. I am gonna move on to the next part. Um, but... All right, so the next part is, let's just do like a quick hello world and display. the idea is that the command, again, the function that listens to our commands is the on message function, which is 
what we're going to be using the most today. So I just want to write something that says if the message of content starts with uh, exclamation mark hello, the bot is going to say send hello world. So we're going to add that. So we're going to do another annotation client event and async def on underscore message. And we're taking a parameter in, which is message, which is what is being written in chat. Now, the first is statement if message dot author equal equal to client dot user is actually important because if we don't have this, what this does is it's making sure that the message, the per writing the message in the chat is not our Discord bot. So that's useful because if I say, if I just had it something like starts with hello and this just output a hello, it would go on to this infinite cycles of just printing out hello because hello, the word hello is constantly appearing on chat. And we wanna make sure that if the Discord bot is the one sending the message in chat, then we are not doing anything with it because that's the client and not the user. But the next part is if message dot content dot starts starts with and it is hello await message dot channel dot send hello world. Okay, and now I'm gonna say, I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna run it again. Just a note here, I, I know there's no, um, what do you call it? I forgot what's, this is not there. I forgot what this is called, but it's not here, but you gotta add it because this is essentially a string. Um, and now if I run it, it should, so if I say hello, yep, it gives back hello world. And it's important to know if I say hello, two, three, four, it's also gonna give back hello world because it says our only statement is if message.content starts with, so if it starts with this, then we're just gonna print out hello world. So now we got hello world return. That's great. Now we're gonna go to the more, um, juicy portion, which is um, actually getting, working with the API and getting the data and displaying the data in Discord. This is till now was just like, under, get to you understand, get you to understand the two important functions on ready and on message. And essentially now everything that we're gonna be doing is gonna be in this on underscore message function. Okay, so now working with Open, Open Weather's API. Before we use Open Weather's API, we would need an API key to get the data. Again, API key is just for us to get, for the, for the application to verify who's accessing the data. So I signed up for it and this is my API key. This can actually be used by everyone because I don't believe there's 60 people and there's a limit of 60 calls per minute. So if you don't have your own API key, you feel free to use this. I don't recommend it though. You should have your own API key, but this is what the API key is. And um, it's important. Let me just also show you how the actual output looks like. So if I look at the example of API call, I click on it. I think I showed this in the slides, but you can see that it's 
JSON data is coordinates, and then there's the coordinates of the location, the weather, the ID, what, what type is it? There's clouds, description, uh, icon, it's just an icon. Um, there's visibility. This is the important part, the main part. This is what we want to be focusing on because that has temperature feels like temperature minimum and temperature maximum. And obviously feel free, you can also get, you can also keep other information like wind speed and wind angle, but for simplicity purposes, I'm just focusing on this main key and taking these values. So how do we do that? Well, the first part is we need to put in our API key. So I'm gonna name a variable API key and I am going to just get my key. So this is now in there. Uh, and now the second part is we wanna now work more on our on message function. So we're gonna add another if statement that basically says if message.content dot starts with, and this one is weather, we're gonna say location. So the important thing to note is here to know is we don't know what the location is. We'd have to get that location from the user. So if I go back to here, if you look here, um, this is the location. So we'd have to extract, we'd have to extract this location from our input. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna say location is equal to message dot content dot replace. And what we're doing here is we're just replacing everything else with um, we're replacing the weather with null, with nothing, with an empty string dot lower. And that should just keep us with the location of the place. Obviously, this is not error free because someone can just write exclamation mark weather and say one, two, three, and it won't remove the one, two, three, and then that would cause problems. But imagine you're a good user, you know, and you don't do that. That's how it would work. Then I'm going to create a new variable called init initial data. It's just, just the initial data. And I'm going to say get underscore weather. And my parameter is going to be location. Now, this obviously has an error because, well, there is no function called get underscore weather. So we want to now make a function called get underscore weather. And to do that, that essentially that function just retrieves all the data off that location from the open weather API. So when I showed this, this get weather function returns all of this. That's what we're going to do with it. So the important part to know is I'm going to click here. We want to, oh, we don't want to spell it, track it. I'll go here and we want to click on the current weather data API doc and take a look at it. And in it, we can see how we can call for current weather data for one location. And we're just going to do it by city name. And this is the first one, just by city name. So it is api.openweathermap.org. Inside here comes a city name. And inside this comes the API key. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. OK. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to make this function. So def get underscore weather. And we're going to take in our city name. And we also want to make sure that it, it's not blank. Like the user didn't just leave it at exclamation mark weather. And there's actually some city name that's been inputted. So we're only going to do anything if the length of the city name is greater than or equal to one. I don't know many one letter cities, but there might be one. So now this is the URL. So I am just going to copy this URL. And in this, I'll put it here. And essentially, 
here is my city name. So it's an S string, first of all. So remember, it's an S string, not a normal string. City name, there's an API key. And I've added this and units equal to Imperial because I like Fahrenheit, not Celsius. And by default, this outputs information in Celsius. Then what we're gonna do is you wanna obviously, this is just giving a JSON output. We wanna now load this JSON data. So we're gonna put in a variable called data. I'm gonna say data is equal to JSON dot loads and requests. So this is where we use the request library, request dot get. Well, we're getting the information from the URL variable, which is this. And we don't, we wanna get the content. So get URL content. And then I want to p print. So not just print, but p print basically prints in a nice, beautiful way data, which is what our complete output is. And we are going to return data because that's what we're supposed to do. My file. Yeah. And now there's no error here because our get weather works. Now let's run this. So when I run this, started, it's locked in. And when I run this and I say weather Dallas, nothing displays here because, well, we're not doing anything, but if I look here now, this is the JSON data that's being printed. So clouds, coordinates, ID, um, the time zone, visibility, how much visibility there is, Apparently there's broken clouds in Dallas. I'm not in Dallas, so I can't confirm that. Um, and it feels like 64 degrees, humidity is 64. So essentially now we have all the data, but we just need to keep the temperature info. So in the future, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna focus on this part and delete everything else. Um, I'm going to stop running it when the mark is completed. And right now it doesn't display anything because I haven't worked on that part. Right now we've just gotten in the data. And now we work on, you know, getting it to display uh, things like actually. All right, so now to wrap it up, the first thing you wanna do is, well, we don't wanna deal with all this data. So we're gonna parse out the extraneous information. And as I told before, if you look at up on the console, we notice that our useful information lies under the main key of our JSON output. So we're gonna restrict our information just to this field. Even in the main key, I have decided to not keep humidity and pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove them. So to do that, I'm just gonna have another function because why not? And I'm gonna say def uh, parse underscore weather underscore data. That's what I wanna call it. This is taking in data. The fun parameter name can honestly be anything. I just kept it data. And data is gonna be data of just the main. So now we've just restricted our data to this. This is what will be in our data variable after this line. And then I don't want to deal with humidity or pressure. So I'm going to delete data humidity. And delete data pressure. And I'm just going to return data then. So now we have return data. Um, and Essentially now what we have is info that's coming in as temperature field underscore like temperature underscore min, temperature underscore max and things like that. But in the output, I want something that says my output here, it says current temperature feels like minimum temperature, maximum temperature, which is not hard, you know, there's multiple ways to do it. But what I've decided to go ahead and 
do is create a dictionary called name underscore change where I'm just taking these names, uh, taking the original names from the file as the keys and the names I want to display as the values. And that way it becomes easier for me later on when I'm displaying the output to just change the name from temp to current temperature. So name change is equal to, um, so for the first one is temp and I'm gonna call it current temperature. Then the next one is fields underscore like. And I'm gonna say fields like, if I missed a comma, then temp underscore min, minimum temperature. And then temp underscore max. Maximum temperature. And again, I get squeaky lines. I'm just going to reformat them. Yep. So that's what uh, this is a dictionary for now. It's just called name change. There's nothing great. You can also avoid using it if you want to. I just found it to be easier for me. So now the important part is we got this data that just has what we want temp, temp max, temp min, and fuse like. But well, it's still not being displayed on Discord. So now we want to make a function that will now finally display this data. So okay, I'm gonna call def weather underscore message. And it takes in the data and the location of the place that we have the data for. And the location is just the location dot title. So it's calling discord's title library. And well, it's essentially saying that whatever you're parsing in, that is our location. Then we're gonna say, now this is what we're gonna output. So message, let's say discord dot, and we're gonna give it as, gonna embed the output, cause why not? It looks cooler. And let's say embed, our title is gonna be another F string. We're gonna say, location, weather. So this would be like the first line where it says Dallas weather. That's what we're writing right now. So location weather, then our description would be, and this is a message is like a part of discord.py's library. So it has another parameter called description and description would be another F string and it would be weather for location. And now this is where it gets interesting. I like the color green. So I'm just gonna use the color green as the output, which is this sidebar of that screen. You can leave this blank. And the way I do that is I have another variable called color underscore scheme. And it has the hex value for green, which I know. So that is zero X. Oh, wait. It's zero X zero zero eight hundred. And that's the hex scheme for green. You can search this up online for any color you want on that sidebar. Just make sure you add zero X and not uh, the hash symbol. Okay, so now we're turning this and now we have the first part done, which is just Dallas weather, weather for Dallas in the sidebar. And now this is where we're getting the data from open weather and we're displaying it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do four key in data. So basically we're traversing through our data field, data dictionary and 
the keys are just fields like temp, temp max, and temp min. So as we're traversing through it for keen key data, we're gonna say message dot add underscore field. And our name is gonna be name change of key. And our value is gonna be string data key. And I just said inline is equal to false because I want not everything to be displayed on one line, but multiple lines. And what I've done, what, what's gone and happened here is um, basically now fields underscore like becomes fields like. Temp underscore min becomes minimum temperature. Temp underscore max becomes maximum temperature. And I have an error because I said equal to, yep. And now we're also displaying sort of value is gonna be whatever data, whatever value is in the key. So for Dallas, it would be, if it's temperature, it would be 68.23 and we'll print that. And now we have that output, we're just gonna return it. So we wanna return our message variable because it has everything to display now. So we've gone ahead and done that. But nothing, it's still not gonna work right now because the file that, the, mess, the function that listens to everything on Discord is on underscore message. And for now it just does, well, it just gets data from get underscore weather. But we're gonna change that really quickly. So. Once you've got our initial data, we have this function called parse underscore weather data that uses this data and shortens it up even more. So I'm gonna call, make a new variable called data and I'm gonna call parse underscore weather underscore data. And the function is data, I'm sorry, not data, in it underscore data. And then I'm gonna send back this message. So await message dot channel dot send. And again, we're gonna send it as an embedded message to embed weather underscore message. We have the data, we know the location and boom, that's it. So this is what the on message function should find look like you can ignore this part this was for a random number test but now if i run it so okay. start it's gonna run the weather bot it's locked in cool i'm gonna say weather of dallas ah oh, and we have our error no, it should return something. Hmm. Did I, am I sending everything back correctly? Yes. If master content starts with the URL, key return message. We have our token, we have our API key. We're turning everything, we're calling everything here. Yeah, this should run, let me try it again. Is it up? Yep, it is up now. Or maybe. Is it because my spelling is wrong by any chance? Yeah, okay. Has no attribute embed, which is which line? This should not be a problem. Huh? You have to capitalize the E, I think. Oh, yep. I see it. All right. So I apologize for the delay again. But now, now it should run. Um, Wait, now you spelled it wrong. Uh, hmm? You spelled Oh, okay. Yeah, Python can be a little bit annoying. I change it and I'm just gonna add this back. Uh, 
All right. It should work now. Yep, it works. So it says the current temperature is 68 degrees. This might be a little off because uh, open weather, I think, updates its data every um, 15 minutes or something like that. But essentially, this is what it is. I can type any other city. So I live in Cupertino. So if I search up I live for Cupertino, yep, this is what it is right there right now. So that's great. You know, come to the end of it, we read data from open weather. We got all that information. We have our code running, but it's not running 24 seven because the moment I stop running it, well, it will go back to offline soon. But now if I type say weather of Dallas, nothing's gonna happen because the bot is now offline, it's finished. So that brings to us to the next part where compute engine allows us to run it 24 cross seven. Sonia, you're muted if you're saying anything. Yep, so now we learned how to like run the bot and uh, have the bot running. But um, one thing we need to do no, no, learn is how to make it running 24-7. Um, and running it on your computer 24-7 doesn't make sense. It's going to take a lot of energy. It's going to take a lot of CPU power. And you probably don't want to do that, especially especially if you want this spot, if you want to actually release this spot to the market for people to use. So what are we gonna do is we are gonna use Compute Engine, which is, which is this uh, service by a Google Cloud platform, which will help us uh, run this spot 24 seven. So for this first, we go to console.google.com and make sure you're on the correct project. You can uh, select your project from your, um, and then from the navigation, go to a uh, compute engine and then VM instances. And GCP does take a little while to load. So if it's taking a while, don't be worried. It usually does that. So now that we are on this page, we click on create instance. Um, and this is where we uh, create our VM instance. We start by give it, giving it a name. So let I'll just call it Bot Home. And that there's a bunch of rules, so make sure to follow them. Like there shouldn't be any numbers, there shouldn't be any capital letters. Uh, after the name is done, we select a region and zone. Uh, most preferably, the region should be the one uh, closer to your targeted audience. Um, so for uh, Dallas, the closest uh, region is Iowa. And then after the, re after the region, we choose a zone. And this doesn't affect anything and it is not dependent on anything. So you can choose any zone. With a uh, compute engine, you have a lot of uh, machine configuration options, but um, for uh, the Discord bot, we just need a basic general purpose, um, general purpose VM. So we'll go with the default settings. And if you scroll down, you can even select your boot disk. And if you click on change, you can see there are a lot of versions, a lot of operating systems available. Um, we are gonna run this on Linux because that has a lot of uh, things already pre-installed on it. Um, and I'm going with the default Linux 10, but you can go with any of the other options. And then we click create. And this is gonna take a good two to three minutes. And by the time this happens, let me talk to you more about what Compute Engine is. And before we talk about Compute Engine more, uh, you all should go ahead and check into the ACM portal. Um, 
so that uh, we can track your attendance in ACM events. So the people who attend the most ACM events this semester will be getting a bit of swag uh, mailed to them. Um, so Compute Engine, it is a infrastructure as a service uh, provided by Google, which means it's a completely raw building block of cloud computing. You handle everything, even like as you saw in the setup scene, there were setup screen. There were a lot of uh, uh, settings you could do. You could you can even create your own uh, VM from scratch without using any of the pre-made settings. But that also means there's a lot of managerial data you have to handle on your own. So uh, which means that you are responsible of uh, scaling the application or scaling the VM. So if it happens to be like you need more memory, it will not. Uh, Compute engine will not automatically give you more memory. It will just give you an error message and you have to figure out you need more memory and then go and uh, change the settings. You also are in charge of uh, making sure that the bot, uh, that the VM instance isn't running when you don't want it to run because the uh, you are charged based on the uptime. So if you accidentally keep it running when it shouldn't be running, you are going to be charged So make sure to uh, stop it after a while and there's a lot more uh, about compute engine you can read about uh, it's at this link cloud.google.com slash compute let me put that in the chat and compute engine is actually one of the most basic blocks of uh, cloud computing in gcp all of google's uh, products that you use use this um, Spotify, Twitter, PayPal, there are a lot of big companies that use Compute Engine and that's where they uh, create their VMs to serve their applications. Um, let's go and see whether this is set up. So this is set up and in track it, you should go and click um, mark as completed and next. So now that we have set up our uh, we our compute engine basic configurations, we are going to go and set up our VM. So we are going to go click SSH, which is basically stands for Secure Shell, which tells uh, the system to securely log into a computer which is not our own. And if you get any like error messages like pop up blocked or do you want to go, just click continue. It's just basic security protocol that GCP follows. So you should be like, you should be seeing something of which looks like a terminal. This is basically your OS and there is no GUI in this because as I said, like compute engine is the basic code block. You have to build everything yourself. Um, we are gonna get, uh, we are gonna go ahead and start by uh, installing uh, all the dependencies of Python and pip. So you just copy this. And whenever it asks, do you want to continue, just click Y. And it shouldn't take more than five minutes at the most. So we've installed Python. Now we are going to install pip. So for that, we are going to install wget first, which, which is used to getting uh, files and uh, files from uh, external links. And using wget, we are going to get pip. And then we are going to associate Python with pip. And to make sure that it has been correctly set up, we are going to do pip version. And you should see something like pip version number and then the package it is that it is there in and the Python version. And once it is done, you can mark this as completed.
so we have a vm configured uh, now we are going to actually start and uh, move our port over here so first we are going to install discord and request which are the two main dependencies we used and then in a um, command line editor we are going to create a file um, you can use anything which you are comfortable with um, i'm using uh, vim and there are some basic uh, Vim uh, commands I have included in track it. So Vim file name to uh, open or create a file. And I want to insert something. So I'm going to click I. And then from my computer, I'm going to get my bot.py file. Copy all of this and paste this in here. And I'm gonna save it by clicking escape colon and then WQ. Again, I'm gonna test that it's uh, working as expected by doing Python 3 uh, bot.py. And you can see it has the basic the uh, login message. And if you go to Discord, you can see that it is online and it responds to messages. So this is what we did in a local server, but how do we keep it 24 seven and make sure that it doesn't interrupt, it doesn't exit when you close this window. So let's exit out of this by doing control C. We are now gonna install um, Tmux. So that would be APT install Tmux and Tmux, if this doesn't let you do this, then do sudo apt install tmux. And tmux is basically a terminal uh, window. And this term tmux is a terminal window that keeps on, uh, in which processes keep on running even after you have exited out of the window or even out of the system. After we have installed tmux, we are going to create a new tmux session and you can call it whatever you want. Let me, I'll call it bot. And you'll see that you have entered into a new bash or terminal. Um, and by doing LS, I'm just verifying that everything which is there, everything which should be there is there. And now I'm gonna run bot.py as I was running previously. And we see that it's online. Let's try exiting out of this window and see what happens. So we have exited out of this and it's still online and it's still responding to messages. And basically that's how you keep, uh, that's how it is gonna keep running. So you can exit out of GCP. You can even like shut down your computer and it is gonna keep running because um, it's not being run on your computer, it's being run on a computer, on a VM image, on one of the uh, one of the uh, computers in GCP's uh, data center in Iowa. So this is the gist of how you should, it should be running 24 seven. Um, if you need uh, more info about how to like, go, how to like get into the Tmux session, you can just do Tmux AT, session name, you can kill it by saying kill session. And there's a lot of stuff you can do with Tmux. Um, you can learn more about that in the Tmux cheat sheet. And yeah, that's basically how you create a Discord bot and have it running 24 seven. This is uh, how we do it with uh, Discord shares for the DSC bot and the ACM bot. And uh, now that you've uh, learned how to create a bot, you can even start making your own bot and having I'm inviting it to servers you and your friends use. You can keep it in a Discord marketplace or you can even start contributing to our own box. Also make sure to uh, join both the DSC and ACM Discords and along with our mailing list and portal. And um, thank you all for coming tonight. Yeah, thank you all for coming. If you guys have any questions, um, do let us know.